प्लीज रिपीट आफ्टर मी धर्म प्रोजित गई तवत्र परमो निर्मत सरनाम सदा धर्म विद्यम वास्तव मत्र वस्तु सेवदम तापत्रोन्मूल महामुनिकृते प्रैक्टिस मोर टू मोरो today we will get started with the reading part is that all right yes please okay. <clears throat> so nirvi prabhu is it possible for you or natasha mataji to share screen yes prabhu ji we can do that okay so whenever you are ready you let me know and then i'll stop sharing and uh, you can share I'll just enable anybody to share screen. Okay. So, who would like to read the translation? I can do it, Prabhuji. Yes, Suresh, okay, go ahead. Completely rejecting all religious activities. Okay, share the screen. Sorry, Prabhuji. Uh, sorry, Prabhuji. I was just saying that uh, before you start, I can uh, share the screen. Nikhil Prabhu wanted me to share the screen. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Prabhuji, awesome. that'll be great. Thank you, Prabhuji. Sure. Stop, and you can share now. Sorry for completely. That. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Completely rejecting all religious activities, which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad Gita profounds the highest truth. which is understandable by those devotee who are fully pure in heart heart the highest truth is really reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all such truth approves the threefold miseries this beautiful bhagavatam compiled by the great sage vyas dev in his maturity insufficient in itself for the god realization what is the need of any other scripture as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of bhagavatam by this lecture of the knowledge the supreme lord is established within his heart hari krishna purport bhi padhna prabhu ji religion includes four sorry sure prabhu ji are saying Yes. Yeah. So religion includes four primary subject, namely pious activities, economic development, satisfaction of the senses, and finally liberation from material bondage. Irreligious life is barbarous condition. Indeed, human life begins when religion begins. Eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating are four principles of animal life. These are the common both to animal and human beings. but religion is extra function of the human beings without religion human life is no better than animal life therefore in human societies there is some form of religion which aims at self realization and which makes references to man's eternal relationship with god in the lower stage of human civilizations we like to, um quickly first uh, just to mention because translate i think 
if you might won't mind please uh, talk about the translation a little bit because then prabhupad keeps explaining like you know every point from it so we can follow one by one as you know where is he talking from or what is he describing that we will be able to i think understand more if you don't mind yeah. no that's very good prabhu ji yes i agree with you here in the translation what i understood prabhu ji to everyone can share ki then if we surrender to krishna by full surrender i mean surrendering means full surrender like that's what we do the dandavat pranam means complete surrender to the lord then only then we can understand the lords like one day i asked the questions ki how do we know come to know that the krishna is giving mercy or not then if you surrender submissively to the lord then at the certain stage you can understand the realization that the yeah god we are getting the mercy of the lords and that will we will feel from our heart that that is the the abstract from the translation parts and in the purport in the first paragraph what we read like uh, the ahar nidra bhay mathutam to then all there is no difference between the men and the animals to all those four activities ahar nidra bhay everything is then same quality as the human and animal but only the difference is religion so that makes the human beings little bit more intelligent as compared to the animal so that we can make our relationship with the god that's what prabhuji to the you can say prabhuji you can cover it thank you thank you thank you for explaining prabhuji um yeah just uh, again the in the translation it starts off with completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated so you know here i think it is also talking about karma kanda and and all the religious activities which are material anything that is any worship even if you are doing it for material motivation that is being rejected so completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated this bhagavat pranam propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure by pure in heart so to get to that level we have to reject all material motivation the highest truth is real in real is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all so again uh, you know anything that talks about the 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 problems like in science of uh, self realization uh, you know series we learn that what is real problem the problem that is a problem for everybody that is a real problem not what is just a problem for me or in my circumstances so here is saying highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all that is the highest truth such truth uproots the threefold miseries so we uh, you know we know about threefold miseries so such a truth helps everybody uproots the threefold miseries this beautiful bhagavatam compiled by a great sage vyasdev is maturity is sufficient in itself for god realization what is the need of any other scripture as soon as one attentively and submissively so how should we listen to this attentively and submissively hears the message of bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge the supreme lord is established within his heart again very strong like atul was saying the starting the as they are itself it is being very is being established the importance of this um as we start so and then suresh prabhu very nicely explained the first uh, paragraph already and he summarized the trans- the translation also very nicely so we'll, if any other devotees have any comments please go ahead otherwise we'll keep reading okay anyone who wants to read the second paragraph of the purport i can read if it's okay sure okay. please go ahead in the lower stages of human civilization there is always competition to lord it over the material nature or in other words there is a continuous rivalry to satisfy the senses driven by such consciousness man turns to religion he thus performs pious activities or religious functions in order to gain something material 
But if such material gains are obtainable in other ways, then so-called religion is neglected. This is the situation in modern civilization. Man is thriving economically. So at present, he is not very interested in religion. Churches, mosques, or temples are now practically vacant. Men are more interested in factories, shops, and cinemas than in religious places, which were erected by their forefathers. This practically proves that religion is performed for some economic gains. Economic gains are needed for sense gratification. Often, when one is baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification, he takes to salvation and tries to become one with the Supreme Lord. Consequently, all these states are simply different types of sense gratification. Hare Krishna. So, yes, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Um, I think just by reading what I understand here is Prabhupada is saying that. Um, in, in, in modern days, we are driven by, we have um, neglected or we have shown less interest in, in um, the churches, mosques or the temples or other religious activities that our forefathers had uh, created for us. But we are more becoming interested in factory shops and cinemas and uh, then in religious place. So in other words, in the lower stages of human civilization, there is always competition to lord it over the material nature, or in other words, there is a continuous rival rivalry to satisfy the senses. So in other words, we are trying to, by, by inclining ourselves towards satisfying the material need and by, um, being interested more in the symbols of material manifestation like factories, shops, and cinemas, we are actually satisfying our senses. So he uses a um, very nice phrase that economic gains are needed for sense gratification. And often when one is baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification. So he mentions the wor word that we are baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification. So in other words, we are not even confident when we are, uh, we are, when we are involved in our pursuit of sense gratification, rather, we are baffled, he takes to salvation and tries to become one with the Supreme Lord. And in this baffled situation, we take to the salvation and try to become one with the Supreme Lord. So in other words, we kind of, we are in an uncertain space. On one hand, we are in the pursuit of sense gratification. On the other hand, we are trying to become one with the Supreme Lord. So the consequences, all these states are sim simply different types of sense gratification. So. Um, ultimately, everything boils down to, for us, those who are in, um, involved more in, or inclined more towards the material uh, needs or material satisfaction are just another ways of self sense, um, sense gratification. That, that was clear. Okay, yes, lovely. So, so what does it mean by lord it over material nature? Rupa says here, there is always competition to lord it over material nature. Rupa uses this in Bhagavad Gita also. What does that mean? So, from what I'm understanding is that there is always competition to lord it over the material nature. Or in other words, there is a content level to satisfy the 
senses. Um, so there is a competition between, so he, the Lord is not used in a capital letter. So does that mean like there is a competition between our senses of have, uh, achieving the material satisfaction over um, our senses of inclining towards the Lord or, or, or meeting the, I don't know. So Mati, here it is, uh, that's why I wanted to point it out because um, here Prabhupada is trying to, you know, Prabhupada is explaining here how we get driven by our need or our want for sense gratification. That is uh, kind of the gist of this, that that is what lord it over. Lord it means, what does the Lord do? He commands. He, he commands that everything should happen like I want it. He commands his slave that do this, do that. This should, you know, put this here, put this there. So he is the Lord. He thinks when we think ourselves to be the Lord, means the person who is in charge, that is when the problem comes. So when we are having this false ego that I am the doer, I can control things. I have the power that I can do. You know, it is me who's doing this. I can buy this. I, I, have, I have this big house. I have this car. So that is the problem. That is, that is our propensity to trying to lord it, trying to be the lord over the material nature. Oh, over are you saying to be proud of our, to be, our glor or glorifying our um, material you know, propensity or our glorifying our material accomplishment? Is that... Well, at the basic level, it is really identifying with the body and not the soul. That is the oh. kind of where it boils down to. If I think that I am the doer, me as the person, as the false ego, not me as the soul, which is the true ego. So the, who am I? That comes back to that question. When, when, I, um, when I think of myself to be this body and whatever is related to this body, then I consider myself to be the cause of whatever is happening around me, that I can control everything. I think of myself as the controller. But when I get to my true ego, that is, I am not this body, I am the soul, I am the servant of the Lord, and my place is as the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord, then I'm not lording it over. I'm not trying to say everything is in my control. You just leave it to Krishna. Then you are not lording over. Does that make sense, Nadi? That when I try to be okay. the controller, that I... is what lord it means like the lord is not used for Krishna here. Lord it over means being trying to be the lord, trying to be the controller. Okay, so are you saying that, so when we try to, um, when, when we are driven by our outwardness satisfaction, then we try to control over the material needs. But when we are driven by our inner consciousness, then we try to leave everything off to the God. Is that? Kind of, um, Mataji, again, uh, just uh, coming back to the point that who am I? Am I this body or am I the soul? When we are identifying with our true self the, as the soul, then we believe that we are not the controller and we give the control to the Lord. But when we think of myself to be, as you are saying, as the false ego, as, as this body or the controller, then we try to lord it over. Lord it over just means trying to control, trying to be the controller versus being controlled. So he is saying in the lower stage of human civilization, there's always a competition to lord it over the material nature or in other sense words, continuous rivalry to satisfy the senses. Why is there rivalry? Rivalry is between the, our true nature that we should be as the soul in the driving seat. We should be controlling our uh, intelligence by intelligence, controlling the mind from uh, 
and by the mind controlling the senses and not the other way around. So that is the rivalry. The senses want to go and do what they want. They want to lord it over material nature. The rivalry is that my true self is, is in competition with that because my true self is saying, no, that is not what I'm, I am. I am a soul. I'm a part and parcel of the Lord. My place is as a servant of the Lord and these senses are to be controlled. So that is, is this, a isn't it this something we read? Um, it sounds like Eid and ego, ego, Eid versus ego uh, rivalry. So this is something we read uh, weeks before when we were doing nectar of instruction. Where is this something kind of similar? I don't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but something where we fight among within ourselves and kind of I don't know if I can relate to it. But it sounds comes all Prabhupada books. Uh, <clears throat> But, uh, mm -hmm. not. So I, I may have missed that session, but but yes, this concept, uh, Prabhupada mentions it in explanations of multiple in multiple okay. areas. Okay. 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 From Bhagavad Gita. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay. Um, so hopefully I've not confused people more. <laughs> any, any other questions on this? Okay, I'll keep going. So then uh, after that, Prabhupada mentions that, that, you know, once he establishes that we should not be in competition, we should be getting back to a true nature kind of, and he's explaining that what the competition is between the sense gratification and trying to satisfy our true nature. After that, he, uh, he says, if we are trying to lord it over the nature, if we are trying to be the controller and Man is turning to religion. He mentions this is Bhagavatam. Um, when we read it in seventh canto, actually, we talked about this too. That men, they can sometimes, and Bhagavad Gita also mentions it, that sometimes men turn to religion to actually satisfy either the material needs or to actually show off. So it is also a way sometimes to show off or, or again satisfy the ego that, see, I am a religious person. So driven by such consciousness to trying to lord it over nature, man turns to religion. He thus performs pious activities or religious functions in order to gain something material. So if you're doing religious activities to gain material things, that is being condemned here. But if such material things are, are obtained by other ways, then so-called religion is neglected. So here, you know, like uh, uh, Prabhupada mentioned that if, uh, you know, we are going to, Factories, more uh, factories and cinema halls, all these because our, you know, our wants, our needs are being satisfied somehow. And if we think that things are going well, then you go to all these places. Not when somebody is having a problem or having, you know, difficulty. Then you then you don't feel like going to the cinema or going shopping and stuff like that. Then, but uh, then we turn back to God. But so here he's saying that if material gains are obtainable in other ways, then so-called religion is neglected. So, so that's the that's being explained here. This is the situation of modern civilization. Man is thriving economically. So at present, he is not very interested in religion, which means if we were not well off, well, we were not doing well economically, then we would be turning to God, Bhagwan, please give me more money. Please give me more, more, more. So that is the, and if we, when we have it, then instead of thanking God, if we have something, we are neglecting that we do not go towards God and we, you know, just get entangled in that sense gratification. So that's why the churches, mosques, temples are vacant and factories, shops and cinemas are thriving. Um, this practically proves that religion is performed for economic gains. That is how Prabhupada is explaining here. That is, proves it that when we are happy and senses are satisfied, we do not want to turn towards God. Economic gains are needed for sense gratification. Often when one is baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification. So this is the other side. Now somebody is trying to get sense gratification and Krodha Bhavati Sammoha. He can't do that. He gets angry or uh, or he may actually in that, in, that, um, in that state of mind, he may surrender to God. And that actually is supreme mercy. Even if, you know, that is a real good, way of utilizing a bad situation is if we can turn to God in that, that situation. Consequently, all these states are simply different types of sense gratification. So just uh, thinking about God when we are in problem, trouble, when we cannot satisfy the senses, that is just 
uh, that is just part of sense gratification. That's not the way the religion is supposed to be performed. Hare Krishna. Please, so, uh, Prabhuji, one more thing, if you could clarify. Um, so here, the uh, he uses the word baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification. Uh, could you say that what exactly he's trying to say? Samathiji, this is like bewildered. Baffled in the pursuit okay. of sense gratification means he he's trying to gain something, but is not able to get it. So then he says, okay, I can't, um, I, he, he's, he's now so much attached to it that he's like, oh, I'm doing this all my life. I still cannot get it. I don't know what else can I do? Okay, let me turn to God. Maybe God can help me. Okay, so, so the gist is okay. going, even if you go to the God, you are basically going with a purpose to satisfy yourself rather than, yes, rather than for the sake of prayer or for the sake of a God. Yes, so so if we are baffled to a sense, we are trying to get something. I really want this. I I really want a iPhone 12, and I uh, you know oh, I don't have money to get it. Oh God, please give me enough money that I can get an iPhone 12. Okay. So, okay. Like that. I see. Uh, can I uh, put one more understanding of this uh, of baffled? Hello. Hare Krishna. Oh, sure, please go ahead. So, um, another understanding of this is also like, so one, you explained that, yes, if we are not able to uh, uh, get whatever we desire, we turn to God uh, for fruitive purpose. But another understanding that uh, Prabhupada is talking about, that he takes to salvation and tries to become one with the Supreme Lord. So, even if our desires are fulfilled, it's possible that a person um, may come to this realization that my senses will never be satisfied because senses keep asking for more. So even if your desires are fulfilled, uh, there comes a point uh, of time in life when you realize that I have everything, yet I'm not satisfied, yet I'm not getting this inner peace and happiness. So those, uh, those people turn towards God and they become these, uh, you know, like impersonal uh, spiritual seekers who are um, trying to merge with the God, then they want, and then they understand that the highest purpose of life is liberation. So they are not coming to the platform where they think that God is a, uh, is a person or they should be attracted to the qualities, forms, pastimes, or attributes of God. They are attracted by the impersonal feature of God, which is Brahman, and want to merge with the impersonal feature. So that is another understanding Prabhupada is giving here that he takes to salvation and tries to become one with Supreme Lord. So, um, so like in Bhagavad Gita, it says that there are many reasons why somebody goes to God. Uh, like if you remember, there are four types of people Krishna says will come to me, the distressed or people that are curious or seeking knowledge. Um, so, and then the people that have some desires. Uh, but then these, there are people that actually have uh, achieved a lot, have understood that, okay, this life is not meant for this, it's meant for something higher. Those are transcendentalists, and they will now try to achieve liberation. But if you read the translation, uh, okay. they're saying that... Can you Bhagavatam, close the door when you're going? <laughs> that Bhagavatam actually okay. talks about Krishna's personal form, pastimes, his devotees, and the, the goal of Bhagavatam is to achieve Krishna Prema, not even, we're not even talking about salvation here. So even that is a lower goal for the true, for the pure devotees. Um, but that is another reason why somebody will turn when their senses are baffled, when they understand their mind is baffled, their intelligence is baffled, they're not achieving satisfaction with anything, any kind of pursuits in life. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, that's very well. Uh, very nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even in that situation, Natasha, would you say that we are still trying to lord it over material nature? If we are trying to become one with, with God, then we are still trying to be God so that we can lord it over material nature? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I think that true spiritual seekers or transcendentalists at least understand that there is a higher absolute truth. So they it, yes, I mean, there are different kinds of impersonal uh, 
groups of um, uh, yogis, as we know, and there are some that are uh, that think that Aham Brahma, me or I am, or we can become God after uh, death. So that is definitely uh, lording it over. But there are others who are just uh, you know who may not be in the same school of thought. So definitely being a transcendentalist or somebody who's seeking self-realization and salvation is better than just materialistic people or who are using religious for their fruitive desires. Uh, but pure devotees are even better than the transcendentalists. Thank you. Any, any other um, comments or we should go to the next one? Thank you. I saw Raksha Mataji mentioned uh, something in the chat box, which is correct. Like, Sukh mein sumiran sab kare, dukh mein kare na koi. So, dukh mein sumiran jo kare, to Sukh mein sumiran. Actually, yes, I have done a picture. Dukh mein sumiran, dukh mein sumiran. Right, right, right. So, dukh mein sumiran sab kare, sukh mein kare na koi. So, in the, in the, when we are in the, problems then everybody remembers god dukh mein sumiran sab kare sukh mein kare na koi when we are happy then we forget god aur sukh mein sumiran jo kare which means if we are happy and then we are realizing god to dukh kahe ko hai then there will not be any anything to be lamenting because we have we are we are thinking about god all the time so okay we'll keep reading can i read next Sure, Mataji, please. In the Vedas, the above, <clears throat> in the Vedas, the above mentioned four activities are prescribed in the regulative way so that there will not be any undue competition for sense gratification. But Sivat Bhagavatam is transcendental to all these sense gratification factory activities. It is purely transcendental literature, which can be understood only by the pure devotee of the Lord who are transcendental to competitive sense gratification. In material world, there is keen competition between animal and animal, man and man, community and community, nation and nation, but the devotee of the Lord rise above such competition. They do not compete with the materialistic because they are on the path led to God ahead where life is eternal and peaceful. Such transcendentalists are non envious and pure in heart. In the material world, everyone is envious of everyone else. And therefore, there is competition. But the transcendental devotees of the Lord are not only free from material envy, but are well wishful to everyone. And they strive to establish the comp competitionless society with God in the center. The contemporary socialist concept of the comp competitionless society is artificially because the socialist state there is a competition for the post of the detector. From the point of view of the Vedas or from the point of view of common human activities, sense gratification is the basis of material life. There are three parts mentioned in the Vedas. One involves a fruitive activity to gain the promotion to better payment. Other involve the worship, different demigods for the promotion to the plan, planet of demigods. Then one other involves realizing the absolute truth and this impersonal feature and becoming one with him. Hare Krishna. I think we need to read the next paragraph to get the, the full understanding of this one. Okay. It's yeah. Just, uh, Okay, can somebody else read it? Now my throat is giving away. I can read, Mataji. No yeah. <clears throat> I can read. <clears throat> the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth is not the highest. Above the impersonal 
feature is the Paramatma feature. And above this is the personal feature of the Absolute Truth or Bhagwan. Srimad Bhagavatam gives information about the Absolute Truth in his personal feature. It is higher than impersonalist literature and higher than the Jnana Kanda division of the Vedas. It is even higher than the Karma Kanda division and even higher than the Upasana Kanda division because it recommends the worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Sri Krishna in the Karma Kanda, there is uh, <clears throat> in the Karma Kanda, there is competition to reach heavenly planets for better sense gratification. And there is similar competition in the Jnana Kanda and the Upasana Kanda. The Srimad Bhagavatam is superior to all of these because it aims at the supreme truth, which is the substance of the root of all categories. From Srimad Bhag Bhagavatam, one can come to know the substance as well as the categories. The substance is the absolute truth, the supreme Lord, and all emanations are relative forms of energy. Hare Krishna. Yes, devotees like to just um, summarize. Um, would Mataji be able to summarize, or if she's having some throat difficulty? Then Prakshita Mataji, would you like to summarize? Prabhuji, um, uh, <clears throat> I have to read the previous one to summarize, but I can definitely summarize uh, summarize this one which I read. In the previous one, the last they've last <clears throat> line they've mentioned here is that. Uh, Another involves worshipping different demigods of, for promotion to the planets of demigods. And another involves realizing the absolute truth and his impersonal feature and become one with him. So this is the Mayavadi uh, thought process. It's mentioned here that they said, you know, we can, uh, we can also become the god and we are non-different from the god. So if we worship that, we can also, uh, you know, become the god like Mirakar Matyanko. And the second, uh, before that, it's mentioned that other involves worshipping before uh, different demigods of promotion. Today, I was reading second chapter. I don't remember exactly the uh, verse, but it was after 40th or 45th uh, verse that there was mentioned that people worship the different demigods to uh, reach on the heavenly planets where they can enjoy this Som Rasa and, you know, they can have a better life like demigods. So they their aim is to have a better life in heaven. And for that, they worship different demigods gods and do different different austerities whereas the personal aspect of the absolute truth is not the highest as Prabhuji always uh, you know explains this like uh, how is this impersonal like he gives the example of train somebody you know has just seen the light and say this is the god and then after some time somebody uh, you know they uh, they realize that they the, the train is have you know different other uh, things like uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what do we say that, but it's like not exactly the whole train, but they see the different, different uh, parts of train and they realize this is the Paramatma. And when they, one, the one who stays till the end and realizes the, sees the whole train and see that, uh, you know, people are sitting inside. So that is this uh, to, uh, proper definition of a train. So same here that the uh, Bhagavan realization that the God is the personal feature, uh, personal feature of the absolute truth or Bhagwan. So this is the highest realization. And uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it gives the uh, information about this. It is uh, higher than the impersonalist literature and the higher than the Jnana Kanta. Like in the previous verse we read where the Prakashanand was having the argument with the Lord Chaitanya mentioning that why don't you read the Vedas? It is so good. Why you are only in the Sankirtan moment? Then, uh, you know, Lord Chaitanya answered that my guru has told me that I don't have enough knowledge to understand. So just by taking God's name and doing Sankirtan, I can, you know, feel the ecstasy so it's same here that some people say you know having the knowledge of vedas is enough to know the god and some but some will do the karma kanda like do lots of austerities and then see and then they you know try to explain to people that doing this austerity that's austerity going to jungle going to you know himalayas and doing this difficult sadhanas is the way uh, or the other ways to satisfy uh, the God and then you will you will reach go, uh, God or you will realize 
him and even higher than the upasana kanda so kar- karm kanda gyan kanda and then uh, karm kanda is actually higher than the gyan kanda that you are trying to do something for the god but you know realizing this that this is the only way to reach the god, god is not uh, the higher but higher than the yeah, karma kanda is the upasana kanda division so i don't know exactly what is this upasana kanda but with the name upasana as um, i mean i've heard like you know worshiping the god or uh, doing you know seva to the god because it recommends the worship of the personality of god, god. so upasana kanda is even higher than the gyan and karma kanda because you are actually uh, you know uh, giving time to god and serving god so this is even higher then uh, uh, lord shri krishna in the karma kanda there is competition to reach heavenly planets so in the karma kanda we see that somebody uh, you know uh, try to do even higher services and then you know sometimes giving more charity and then things you know there is a competition then if i give more to the temples if i do more and then i can reach this level uh for to reaching the heavenly planets for better sense gratification and there is similar competition the gyan kanda and gyan kanda also we know that you know we know the story of um, yamuna you know having the argument with the uh, kola hala and then uh, you know uh, rochetanya is discussing so many uh, verses and uh, you know like uh, uh, conversation with uh, i don't know if i'm taking the right name like uh, prakashananda i guess in uh, uh, varanasi so they were having uh, you know the talk about this gyan kanda and upasana kanda but as uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu said that above all is the uh, is the, when you surrender to god and you know and you are always worshiping the god is the highest the shrimad bhagavatam is superior to all these because it aims to the supreme uh, so shrimad bhagavatam is just tells you not uh, the how you can reach uh, you know uh, how you can reach uh, the god and uh, by you know tell uh, tells you that so, you know how uh, how we can reach by worshiping or doing the sankirtana movement or just worshiping the god and how we can surrender to the god which is the substance of the root of all categories so i think uh, that uh, in this it's like the, the, the because the krishna is the cause of all causes he is the primeval lord so uh, primeval cause of all causes so uh, that is what we get to know when we read uh, bhagavatam from shrimad bhagavatam one can come to know the substance as well as the category so when we know that you know the when we uh, have this realization of god that god is the superior uh, you know supreme personality of god head then other uh, things which god other categories like other uh, this is my understanding i don't know prabhu ji if i'm right or wrong in this like other living beings or other animals and everything we get to know that they are also a part of parcel uh, you know uh, god is the only creator for them also so they are also every human being is also the part and parcel and other animals also or i mean all other living beings we have on this planet the substance is the absolute truth so to uh, to realize this that bhagwan is the cause of all causes actually gives us uh, uh, gives us this knowledge uh, to be uh, you know to realize that uh, how you know uh, other uh, living entities and other things are uh, here on this planet and uh, the supreme lord and all emanations are relative forms of energy like we read uh, that everything on this uh, a uh, planet is all because of uh, lord's uh, maya uh, ma- maha maya energy and other different energy works for different different things so i think all this knowledge we get to know from shri bhagavatam but most important is not to realize in a impersonal form or a parmatma form although there are different steps you can take uh, but uh, realizing the god as a bhagwan is the ultimate goal and in uh, chapter 6 bhagavad gita when it's explained that above all the yogas is the bhakti yoga so if you target for that these are the, you can take different small steps to be there but the ultimate goal is to re- reach the bhakti yoga hari krishna prabhu ji please correct me this a lot i talk but this is my realization hari uh-huh. krishna question what is the impersonal impersonal aspect of the absolute truth Mataji, Prabhuji explains the Mayavadi uh, thought process. How they say that Mirakar, they don't believe in uh, you know Murti Puja, and they don't believe. They said that uh, we are, we can also be become the God. That sabi uh, Bhagwan hai, or hum bhi Bhagwan ban sakte hai. 
to you know abhiji uh, please uh, add i think this is my uh, is this, this is how this, i think is this idea is like jo bolte hain log ki aadmi mein bhi bhagwan basta hai aisa actually mata ji aadmi mein bhagwan basta hai wo to parmatma realization hai that in every soul there is parmatma so it is higher than the brahman but that does not mean that but in mayavadi concept they try to be the god wo kehte na we hum brahm jyoti mein leen ho jayenge hum bhagwan ko nahi mante hum hi bhagwan hai to hum jo hai jaise wo bhagavad gita ka na main shloka bhul ke kali natasha mate ji ne bataya tha na vasudeva sarvamiti to vasudeva sarvamiti mein wo ye bolte hain ki bhagwan sab mein hai lekin brahman mein wo usko aise samajh lete hain ki hum hi bhagwan तो मायावादी में वो खुद को ही भगवान मानते हैं दे डोंट बिलीव इन दिस मूर्ति पूजा एंड अदर थिंग वो कहते हैं कि हम ही भगवान है परमात्मा रियलाइजेशन इज अ बेटर बिकॉज दे से कि हर चीज में भगवान है हर जीव में भगवान है तो हर सोल में भगवान है परमात्मा जैसे आई डोंट नो जैसे गर्भो दक्षाई विष्णु महाविष्णु और क्षीरो दक्षाई विष्णु का एग्जाम्पल भगवदगीता में दिया है कि कैसे वो अलग अलग यूनिवर्स में जाके एज अ सोल जो है आई थिंक शीरो रॉन्ग बट कैसे भगवान जो एज अ परमात्मा फॉर्म इज इन साइड एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी एंड द बेस्ट रियलाइजेशन इज द भगवान रियलाइजेशन दैट भगवान इज ऑल्सो द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड and we are all the all are the part and parcel of krishna so and our, our original constitutional position is to be the servant of the krishna or the servant of the servant of the krishna so nirmala uh, mata ji uh, did uh, did i answer you. your yeah. question i don't know sorry sure okay hari uh, mata ji i just uh, wanted to say that uh, sorry was somebody speaking No, I was just saying that uh, just to summarize, there are three understandings so, uh, in which we can understand that, God. I think we need to spend some time and explain this in next few minutes properly because Prabhupad keeps talking about this many many times, and this is very very important to understand. So yes, please uh, explain this. Uh. Yeah. So I was just uh, uh, summarizing. Uh-huh. Three... Another thing also I did not understand is becoming one with Him, and that also keeps that coming up. So yeah. So, so let me just yeah. quickly, uh, try to summarize. So there are three understandings in which we can understand God. Okay, uh, this is explained in Bhagavad Gita. So there are three understandings. First understanding is the Brahman realization. All the three are understandings of God. None of them is wrong. It is just understanding to different levels. It's like uh you know you are learning maths you may be learning second le- grade maths fifth grade maths or 10th grade maths in second grade you may understand 2 plus 2 is 4 um you know but in second grade you can't understand that there is something 2 minus 4 also you'll say no they can't be a negative number i've not i've not heard anything like that so that's the understanding at the second grade level or or whichever level so there are three realizations or understandings in which you can understand god the first level of understanding is the brahman realization brahman realization is that you are just you know about the the extent of realization is that god is this energy this light this effulgence okay so that is the brahman realization that everything is coming from this effulgence this uh, light this energy and that is all that there is there is nothing beyond it so that is the first 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 understanding of god okay first level of understanding going forward the next level of understanding is that yes there is that energy that is the brahman and there is that brahman uh, you know that constitutes or gives rise to everything and um, that is there but there is also parmatma that is inside each entity in this universe living and non living or living entity especially there is parmatma so parmatma is there next to the soul in every living entity this understanding that that god is the, actually there as parmatma in every living entity and is guiding that living entity 
that realization is Paramatma realization. So now we are at fifth grade level. We understand that two plus two is four, but there can be something two minus four also. But we still understand there is only whole numbers, like or basically, that is a second level of understanding. So the first level is not wrong. Two plus two is equal to four is correct. But now we understand more that okay, we can have something negative also, negative integers also. So we are having more understanding about God. Both are correct. But even better understanding is the tenth grade understanding of God. That actually there is Bhagwan. There is actually this energetic person, this supreme personality of Godhead, who's beautiful, who's who has all these opulences, and he is the one who has this energy, and he is the one who from whom this Paramatma is coming from, is, is in his Paramatma manifestation. That is the understanding of. Bhagwan, Bhagwan realization, not the supreme personality, the cause of all causes, the the one that is causing this energy of Brahman, is the this this light, this effulgence, this uh, um, energy is actually coming from the being himself, Krishna. That is the Bhagwan realization. So there are these three levels of understanding of God. That there is the highest understanding level is Bhagwan, and the next level is Paramatma realization, and then there is the Brahman realization. Again, none of them is wrong. It is just the level of understanding that is slightly different. If you if you know tenth grade mathematics, then you know the second grade mathematics also. So you understand, and there is so, the yeah. you understand this. So the Brahm Brahma realization is the highest, right? Mataji, the uh, where is Brahman coming from? The person, the Bhagwan, the supreme personality of Godhead. That is the Bhagwan realization is the highest. So three levels again. First highest level of understanding is Bhagwan. There is a Bhagwan, the the person himself, Krishna, who has who has a who has a form, who has his beautiful form, who is, lives in Golok Vrindavan and all that. So that is Bhagwan realization that Krishna is a person. He is a person from which everything else is coming from. Second realization is Paramatma realization that he is he through his different forms through different Vishnu forms. Not going to go that to not don't want to confuse right now. But there is Paramatma realization that Paramatma is in all living entities. The Highest realization is Bhagwan. Second is Paramatma. Third level of realization is Brahman. So, like Rakshita Mata Ji was giving an example, the if a train is coming, if you can only somebody just sees the light or the hears the horn of the train, that is like the Brahman realization. You are just understanding that there is light, there is a sound. That is it. You do not understand anything more. Is that the whole train? No, that is not the whole train. But that is not wrong. That the light and the sound is coming from the train. That is part of the train. Okay, so that is the Brahman realization. The train comes nearer to the station. You see a form of the train. You say, okay, the 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 actual form of the train. That is like the Paramatma realization. And then when you actually see that there are actually people inside it, you can sit inside it. That is the Bhagwan realization. The same example in Bhagavad Gita is given for the sun, that like there is the light of the sun, that is like the uh, the Brahman realization. the The light rays of the sun is like Brahman, the effulgence, the light, the energy. So that is Brahman realization. The next realization is that actually a sun disk. Now there is a platform on the sun. So so the sun disk is like the Paramatma realization. You are closer to the truth. And then the actual understanding is that it's actually a personality, Surya Dev, or the actual inside of the planet, whatever it's made up of, or whatever that star is made up of, or sun is made up of, that is the complete understanding. The person himself, that is Bhagwan realization. Any questions on this? So I have a question, if it's yeah, okay. Sure. So then, um, so okay, fine. I, I mean. Uh, he explains all these realizations, TK, but then um, what do you do? Like, like is he uh, recommending that 
we have to undertake those realizations to be able to reach the God. Is that what he's saying when you become one or something? Or is he saying that's the way to, um, you still, you can take those steps, but you are still never going to reach the God or you can never be one with him. Or I'm, I'm not sure, like, what is the... Bhattaji Prabhupada condemns the philosophy that we can become God. We can become one with God, meaning like we can become God. That is being condemned. What is being uh, Brahman realization, people who realize only Brahman is like that you can, you know, uh, merge with the Brahma Jyoti. You can reach the platform of Brahman, but then you have to come back from there. So that is the Brahman realization. So our goal is the that you know we can reach the tenth grade. We can get all the knowledge. We can we can we try to understand the Bhagwan realization of God because that is out of those three realizations, it is the highest. So if we can try to understand it, then we should try to understand that, and you know we should aim for the best. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. for everybody like Bhagavatam and all these Bhagavad Gita uh, you know they they give le different levels of understanding for everybody that's why when Bhagavad Gita starts off initially everything is explained you know Karm Kanda is explained this Pasna Kanda, Gyan Kanda is explained Pasna Kanda is explained so anybody whoever whichever level they can understand they can they, if they stop over there they will stop over there and then they, they will start from there on the next slide but um, but you know all it caters to everybody. For everybody, it there for everybody. You know the the syllabus for the CBSC is for everybody, first to twelfth grade. It's up to you which level we want to be at. Till what level do we want to understand? Hare Krishna, I just wanted to make a quick point. So Mataji, the reason Bhagwan realization or the person is the highest is the best realization is because we are trying to have a relationship with Krishna. It's not possible to have relationship with some effulgence or with blankness or darkness. Uh, you can have relationship with the person or with the Bhagwan. Uh, so that is one way to remember why, how Bhagwan is the highest uh, platform of success. And everything else, all other realizations uh, are lower. And one of the analogies, the way to understand this is I recently heard and it makes a lot of sense. Think of, uh, think of internet. So if you have Wi-Fi, it's everywhere, right? In your house, like there is internet everywhere. That internet or Wi-Fi that you have everywhere is like Brahman or the Brahm Jyoti. Then you have internet in your phone, each device as well, right? Each iPad or phone or laptop. That internet you have in each device is like the Paramatma feature. So every person or every living an entity has a, bhag has a God inside them. That part is called Paramatma, just like there is internet in each device. And then there is internet everywhere, like Wi-Fi, that's Brahman realization that's spread everywhere. And then there is a powerhouse, where, which is the source of this internet. That powerhouse, that fountainhead, the source is the Bhagwan. If we can get close to the source, then you then you will never be disconnected from internet, right? But otherwise, you may be in a position where you cannot connect. So it is hard to connect to Paramatma or Brahman type of realization. But if you can approach Bhagwan, the person, then you can serve their lotus feet. You can be a servant to a person, not to a to a uh, to a light or to Brahm Jyoti. You cannot be a servant, or you cannot serve them in any way. You cannot have a relationship with them. So that's how Bhagwan realization is the best. He's the source of everything. He's the energetic. So that's why Prabhupada keeps making this point so that we are not even focused on the lower type of realization and waste our time. We just approach the highest uh, highest platform, which is Bhagwan. Bhagwan does the leelas. Bhagwan does the, uh, you know, we chant his names. He has a name. He has opulence. Right. Okay. He has stories. He has pastimes, right? Right. Uh, Brahm Jyoti yes. and Pramatma are very hard to approach. So uh, we don't even follow that path. Not only they are hard, harder, but they are lesser path. So we want the easiest and the best path, which is Bhagwan. So that's a person we are trying to reach. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. That makes a lot Thank of you. sense. Yeah. And this is also probably what we read uh, yesterday when he was giving the example of Einstein, like 
although he's a scientist, he's probably discovering things, but then behind his brain is the some is is the power of God or is the creation of God. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but kind of. But okay. what you explained is makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother. I just I just posted uh, sorry, I just posted a link in the chat. This is from Scone Desire Tree. It's very uh, elaborately explained what the three realizations are. None of the realization is bad. None of the realization uh, should be considered worse than the other. All three realizations uh, take you to Krishna. So I don't want anybody to say that this is bad realization and this is a good realization or a better realization. All three are Krishna's realization. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so I think we should conclude today. It's uh, over time. I think yes. we did over time. Thank you, all the devotees, for joining and uh, participating. We'll meet again tomorrow. Any other last comments, or we'll keep the um, rest of the discussion for tomorrow, if that's okay. It's late. Okay. Mancha kalterubhyascha kripa sandubhyai vacha patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo no namaha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Prabhuji.